out. Yes, Mr. President. You want to see me? Yes, sir. You can come down now. Yes, Dick? Mr. President, as uh, Bill Moyers told you, I've been offered a fellowship at Wesleyan University in Connecticut. Well, good for you. <laughs> that ain't easy to get. No, no, I'm very fortunate. Well, don't wait too long to turn him down so they can call the next guy on the list. Mr. President, I have already accepted. No problem. You didn't know you weren't free to go? Call him up, put me on, give you any trouble. What do you mean, I'm not free to go? I mean, you can't go. I can't get along without you. That makes you a pretty big fella. How big a fella are you gonna be with some fellowship? <laughs> well, you got along without me before I came. You want more money? I got plenty of money. I'll arrange a payment from the Johnson Foundation. Money isn't the issue, Mr. President. This is something that I want to do. What ain't it gonna be? So, make your call. Mr. President, I, uh, I'm very sorry. Now, Dick, do you ever stay here with me? Or you go over to the Pentagon and get yourself a pair of shiny black boots. There's a statute. I asked McNamara. It says we can draft specialists vital to the national interest, and that's what I'll do. And if you won't serve here, you know where I can send you. You may be a general. Oh, you won't want to be a general. You want to be a private, Marine Infantry. That's where the action is. I know you like to be around the action. That's why you stayed here so long. You listen to me, Dick. You go ahead and take your fellowship. But your hands are all over this. You and Moyers and Bundy and everybody else talking about jumping ship. But most of all, you. You put your name all over the great society. You put the tune to those words of war, too, and hiding out on some college campus or anything else you ever do is never going to change that. Dismissed. So how's academic life? Not nearly as challenging. Uh, I have to say I've been getting a lot more sleep. Well, <laughs> someone has to deal with these things. You certainly have the floor space. That I do. That I do. You know the guy in that portrait? James Forrestal. That's right. Truman's Secretary of Defense. Guy went absolutely nuts. And Truman finally got rid of him. 
pinned him with the service medal. He just stood there mute, his throat clamped. God knows what demons going through his mind. A couple days later, he jumped out of the 16th floor of Bethesda Naval. Sometimes you can wrestle too much. Bob, we both came in with Jack Kennedy. We were around when this started. Vietnam started with Eisenhower. Neither of us were here. I know, and it was Kennedy who put in all those so-called advisors, but I can't believe that had he lived, we'd be in this ditch. You sound like you've been talking to Bobby. He's your friend. What's he telling you? If you told the president to stop the bombing, he'd stop it. We have stopped the bombing under my recommendation. You've paused it. And I know that you're going to start up again if they don't agree to talk. And they have said a hundred times they won't knuckle under to that. Now, if you told the president that you no longer believe the bombing can work... I never said I believed that. Bobby says you told him it's not worth a damn. Well, that's between Bobby and me. But as far as my influence with the president is concerned, I think you overestimate my pull. I don't see how that's possible. Peace talks. That's the only way out of this thing now. We've stopped the bombing for 30 days. The brass is ready to hang me. And God, I sure hope Hanoi wants to take the bait because... I just don't think we're going to be able to beat these people. So are you going public with your views? I'm thinking about it. Oh, you are free to do that now, aren't you? Is that where it happened?